This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode we are continuing a look at the Gates of Hell trilogy. Now this episode has been re-recorded because we went a good few weeks in between when it was supposed to drop and actually when it is now dropping. So I've re-recorded it just so it isn't making reference to a ton of things that happened weeks ago. Uh, So for continuity's sake and my sanity, welcome. Uh, We're discussing The Beyond from 1981. This is the second movie in the loose spiritual trilogy that is The Gates of Hell trilogy by Lucio Fulci. Three movies knocked out in the space of about two years and all containing the kind of connective tissue of places that are built upon portals to hell, purgatory or whatever you want to call it. Um... I am in the position just now that I am patiently, is probably the right word, although the patience is starting to run a little bit thin, waiting for a 4K UHD from Arrow for this one. We have already started to make moves through the Filchi back catalogue that they have access to, and we've already seen a City of the Living Dead, which has made its way out. I anticipate we are probably looking within like three, four months before that announcement comes out. So I'm still working off my trusty old Arrow Steelbook, the limited edition one. Absolutely adore the artwork on this. I think this is Graham Humphreys. And uh, in Steelbook format, it's kind of great. The print on this is actually also really, really, really good, but you just know that 4K UHD gonna pop. So yeah, so this is the movie we're covering on this one. Next weekend, you are getting the final one, which I'm also re-recording which is House by the Cemetery. That'll be the last movie in the Gates of Hell trilogy concluded by myself. Now, on any given day, if you ask me what my favourite Filchy movie is, the beyond is usually the gut response. In the same way, if you ask me on any given day what my favourite horror movie is, the thing is usually my response. Um, I would say, stylistically, and even technically, I don't think it's his best movie by a stretch. Um... And I will always root for Don't Torture a Duckling, which I think is probably his most measured and well-delivered piece of filmmaking. However, The Beyond is the right level of kind of heading towards Fulci, really establishing himself as he cut above the rest of Italian directors, carving out his own little place in the the, the kind of horror filmmaking world. And also the side of him being like, not only kind of nihilistic at his core, but showing a different level of of storytelling ability. That way with the, the Italian horror oeuvre in the kind of 70s really started to encapsulate a lot of dream imagery and dream logic. Well, Filci just takes that and like puts it to nightmare logic and really amps up everything. And the Beyond is a really good example of that. Some of the images in this movie will once you've seen them just be there forever you're living rent free in your head so yeah that's the movie we're discussing we will of course play you the trailer so that way you get a feel for what it is it'll be in a small box because youtube just likes suppressing everything that i do that involves taking trailers and putting them in movie reviews so they'll be there in there and when i return after that we will begin you a little bit of detail before talking more about the movie we'll be right back right after this You are Eliza, aren't you? Yes. My name is Emily. I've been looking for you. 
Go back to where you came from and hurry. Leave this place. Sixty years ago, everybody in this hotel disappeared. Every last person. A painter called Spike, who lived here, closeted in his room, had found a key. Accidents. You think you'll um, give it up now? I couldn't do that if I wanted to. <laughs> well, I won't give in. Nobody here. I can feel a presence. Somebody else is in here. Oh, some weird story that Emily told me about room 36. Emily? Who's Emily? The blind girl that lives in the old house by the crossroads. seven gateways to hell, because through that gateway, evil will invade the world. And welcome back, ladies and gents. So you've just seen the trailer for The Beyond. Now let me wow you with screen grabs of the movie whilst I look at my monitor to get information from IMDb, and that way you're not looking at the side of my head. The Beyond was released in 1981 and was directed by Lucio Fulci. The screenplay was co-written by Fulci along with Dardano Saracci and Giorgio Mariuso. The movie itself stars Caterina McCall, David Warbeck, Cynthia Morel, Anton St. John, Veronica Lazar, Larry Ray, Giovanni De Nava, Al Cliver, Michelle Mirabella, we have Maria Pia Marassa, Lauren DiMacci, and there are other folk in here as well. Synopsis is listed on IMDb as a young woman inherits an old hotel in Louisiana where, following a series of supernatural in accidents or incidents, she learns that the building was built over one of the entrances to hell. So a premise that we're kind of familiar with. Um, many movies have been... I love how it, like, in movies were like that. Let's just build something over this. This place that no one dares live that the indigenous people that lived on this land told us don't build anything there um, let's build something there what's the worst it's like the worst Dr Pepper ad ever what's the worst that could happen hell will come for you um, in the case of this one we start with like oldie ye oldie footage we know that because someone's put a kind of modern day Instagram sepia tone over it but we start with a, a good old fashioned witch hunt or warlock hunt where um, someone is sacrificed on the land. And then we jump forward to where this abandoned hotel has been uh, gifted to to its new owner. Um, and like the synopsis says, we very quickly realise that as soon as 
some work start happening in the basement due to bad pipes. Always bad pipes. Bad pipes will ruin everything. Just read The Shining. Um, as soon as the, 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 the kind of bad pipe stuff happens, we really unlock a portal to hell. And then all manner of evil and terrifying shenanigans ensue. The genius of the beyond is... It's always... It's always setting itself to not make sense. And I think that's what kind of benefits it. I think linearly there is a story here which does kind of follow a relatively sensible pattern of weird stuff's happening, we're going to investigate more, there's creepy characters being introduced, uh, more weird stuff's happening, and we are going to race to the end. But ultimately, if you sit down and actually try and chart things out, it's like trying to map the Overlook Hotel. Um, and it's to his best assist that it does that. I think Fulci is more enamoured here with the visuals than he is about anything else in the movie and he happens to have some great actors in here. David Warbeck is absolutely phenomenal in this movie. I think he plays the right level of kind of smug, manic and, and desperate and, and measures which make sense for the character but always that kind of leading man bravado of he thinks he is the only one that can fix things and the more he tries to ultimately the more it fails so I love that aspect about the movie also think some of the visuals in this are just phenomenal and notwithstanding the end of this movie which is one of my favourite endings in, in horror movie history um, the, the actual visual effects of not only the undead in this one which have a very queasy zombie-like feel about them. Um, but images of... There's, there's a great scene actually where a character is knocked over and a kind of jar of muriatic acid spills on their face and starts to melt through. And actually the construction of that is kind of phenomenal. And even today on a 2K or hopefully a 4K UHD when Arrow, I know you're listening, finally get around to it... Um, I think we'll see that even better as a, an effect that holds up. Works very, very well. And I think those elements are where Fulci shines, is the, 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 the idea of adding the terror. Even things like, um, you know, the blind character who is essentially a kind of quasi-psychic. Uh, her, her introduction on that long bridge with the, the kind of visual clouds and an atmosphere, um, with that banging soundtrack um it, it just adds to it it just keeps elevating it fabio frizzi i think delivers an incredible soundtrack on this one he, he does on all the gates of hell trilogy overall to be honest with you but this is the one with that kind of bum 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 kind of vibe in it kind of almost like something like the thing same year uh well thing came out it would, this would have been released the same year the thing would have come out but it came out a year before um but that kind of pulsing sort of boom 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 um is really 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 cool and you've got this kind of almost a uh, choir like vocal with kind of cool synth work and an orchestration as well that it just kind of it adds gravitas and grandeur menace and um a degree of ominous tones over the top of it, it really, really, really works for me. But the the beauty of this one, very much the same way that I like, well, I I really like a movie like Inferno, which Argento brought out the year before, um, is the idea of the dream logic in this movie. Doors don't open to normal places. In fact, the scenes in the hospital later on where doors actually take them back to the hotel don't make sense. But there are similar elements in the actually not only in Inferno, but also in Suspiria, but um, where, where like characters are opening doors and walking into rooms that aren't right. We've all had those dreams where we're in a room that we know and we go to a door that we know that's familiar and we open it and when we walk through, the room that we're in is not the room that we're supposed to be in, but we go with it anyway because in the dream that kind of matches up and connects in such a way that our subconscious just understands it. Um, this is the beyond all the way through. Uh, like It sets up things in a particular way where as the characters stumble through the trappings of where they're going further down into purgatory, um, it works more and more. They, you know, they're never at any point going, wait a second, this door's not right. They kind of continue travelling through and beyond. It's one of the things that actually the Gates of Hell trilogy 
really scores very, very, very well and highly for with me. Um, the, the kind of underground caverns in um, a City of the Living Dead. I, I love those aspects of how they connect together and how that wouldn't make sense above a cemetery, but like I, I like how it's constructed that way. And then um, House by the Cemetery, when we go into the, the basement logic in that house, it's the same sort of idea. It's like the more you're descending down and a kind of quasi as above, so below, the more things are warped and twisted upon themselves. And it's a great way that Filchi masterfully just kind of pushes out with very, very bleak and stark visuals in a way that, like I said before, I think is handled incredibly well. So you've got all those elements together. There are some negatives though, but to be honest with you, they're a product of the time. They're a product of resources. This movie was not made with a huge amount of money. Uh, but there are also kind of elements that add to its charm to me. Certainly would knock back a modern viewer for sure from watching it. You can kind of see the seams in this movie, particularly on the spiders, which are clearly clockwork and wound up or being dragged by strings. Um... Those elements don't age particularly well. There's one or two visual effects with the zombies themselves and their makeup where it, it doesn't look as slick as it possibly should and that you can see it's clearly makeup. And those things probably won't be aided by a 4K UHD. But like I say, it kind of adds to the movie's charm overall. As a brisk runtime, this one does not overstate its welcome at all. And like I said before, it has one of my favourite horror endings in horror movie history. That ending being that our characters ultimately end up in the depiction of purgatory painted in a painting. Um, we've seen that painting before earlier in the movie and ultimately they end up as trapped in there similar to the small child at the start of uh, Nicholas Rogers the Witches. Um, it's, it's a kind of wonderful ending of them passing through, becoming blind and being trapped here with the souls of the trapped damned and undead. And what a like incredible like stick the landing landing that that Filchi delivers here for sure it's if you're trying to chart things that you don't want your brain to feel like it isn't being danced upon by an army of marching fire ants and you want a very simple straightforward a to b movie uh, beyond probably isn't that one for you but as someone that enjoys things that, that operate on a slightly more cerebral level ones that play more with the dream side of logic but still have that narrow that grit that gore and the ability to go for horror above all else the beyond is is one of filchi's best um it's certainly my favorite out of the three of the gates of hell trilogy it's my favourite movie you put out in the 80s. And like I said, on any given day, depending on my mood, if you ask me what my favourite Fulci movie is, it's The Beyond. Um, I'd give it a five. I'd, it's a stone cold five. This one to me is, you know, top, top, top tier Fulci. And I love it for that. Thank you very much for checking out this review. If you're checking us out on YouTube, uh, on the old videos on the YouTube, please hit a like to the channel and a subscribe as well. So like on the video, subscribe to it. Um, leave me a comment. What do you think of The Beyond? Is it your favourite Filchi or do you have another movie that scores higher? Is it even your favourite in the Gates of Hell trilogy? And if not, why not? I want to hear from you. As always, this is for entertainment, mostly. Um, and they're my opinions. So they're not right, they're not wrong, they're just how I feel about things. Uh, if you're checking us out on Spotify or Anchor as a video podcast, then please answer the question that pops up at the end of the episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe there. And if you're checking out the audio version on any of the podcatchers out there, subscribe to the channel. That way you get the content as and when it drops and access to the entire back catalogue of almost 1,300 episodes. We are closing in on that target very, very fast, ladies and gents. All that's left for me to say is thank you for checking out this episode of the podcast Under the Stairs. We will be back with you um, tomorrow where I will be talking about a little bit of Torture Garden um, our third of four planned episodes covering Amicus Productions so yeah Torture Garden is a movie coming tomorrow so until then wherever you are whatever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours please take care of yourselves out there this is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off